In this tutorial, we will show you how to have Stable Diffusion running locally on your own computer while allowing you to use this local Stable Diffusion install from anywhere on the planet through a simple web app on your smartphone or any other computer anywhere for that matter. Here's a quick demo of what I mean. On the left, the Windows command prompt is open and running a copy of Stable Diffusion locally on my PC. It is waiting for a prompt request. On the right is my iPhone and a desktop Firefox web browser, both running the simple web app I built that allows me to send prompts to my local Stable Diffusion install and receive the resulting image on the web app. You can see the progress bar move in the command prompt window when the dream button is pressed in the web app. You can see the image corresponding to the prompt being created locally in a folder that resides on my computer. And you can see this same image shown in the web app. In addition, I've implemented some of the settings for Stable Diffusion as well. You can see them here. A few words about security and safety. The information presented in this tutorial is for entertainment and educational purposes only. I am not giving advice as to what you should do. I do not endorse any of the online services I show here, and I take no responsibility for any issues you encounter as a result of implementing any of this code. So just to cover legal bases, please proceed at your own risk. Basically, you can think of this as just a proof of concept for how to accomplish controlling your local install of Stable Diffusion from a web app. Once you're happy with this implementation, it makes sense to set this up on something more secure like a free tier service on AWS or Azure, for example. Also, please note that the PubNub version being used in this project is not the latest and greatest. Again, if you're building this for more than just a proof of concept, then you should upgrade to the latest PubNub version, which has better security. One obvious security weakness in this web app is that you will see the PubNub pub and sub keys are exposed in the HTML of the web app. So obviously anyone with the link to this web app would be able to see those keys. Again, this is only meant for personal use, testing, tinkering, and not meant for sharing with anyone, nor for production use. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, in order to start this tutorial, I'm going to ask you to first make sure you have installed Stable Diffusion locally. And instead of reinventing the wheel here, I think this guy Ting Ting has done an excellent job at teaching us how to install Stable Diffusion locally. He is who I used initially to do my install. And I highly recommend you go to this YouTube video here, Stable Diffusion, how to install and run any GPU text to image AI and start there. Once you have a successful install, the next thing I would suggest you do is go to his second video video, which is Stable Diffusion Install Fixes, Tips, and Tricks, and Image to Image. In order for my modifications to work, you will have to have completed both these videos and be at the place where you have a Python file named dream.py in your main Stable Diffusion folder. And you'll know what that means once you do the install, but I'll bring it up right now. In this folder here, you're going to see a file called dream.py, and this is the file that needs to be modified, that we will modify together in this tutorial to show you how to connect this up to the web app. Okay, here's the flow for how the app works. First, we enter the prompt text into the web app. You'll need to host your web app on a web server in the cloud. The web app publishes the prompt text to PubNub. In order for this to work, you'll need to set up a free PubNub account and get the sub and pub keys. We'll get to that in a moment. The modified Python script, dream.py, subscribes to the PubNub channel and receives the prompt text that was entered into the web app. In the Python script, the message from PubNub is parsed and written to a local text file. The main loop in the Python script checks the local text file for contents, i.e. when it has a prompt. The image is then created and the local text file is cleared. The image is uploaded via FTP from the Python script to the web server in the cloud. The app waits for a designated amount of time for the image upload to complete and reloads the image created by the prompt. Before we look at the code, let's first make sure you have all the prerequisites needed for this project. Links will be provided in the description below for the following. Both Ting Tingin videos that were mentioned earlier. A link to PubNub. A link to Infinity Free Web Server. Again, not necessarily the best, nor am I suggesting that you use it, but it worked well enough for me to use in this tutorial and demonstrate how to get a web app up and running easily for free and not requiring any credit card. If anyone has suggestions for better, easier free options for setting up a simple web server in the cloud for a web app, please place them in the comments below. A link to my GitHub repo that contains all the completed files you'll need to make this project work. Now let's take a look at these resources I just mentioned. Here is the PubNub website. It's easy enough to set up an account to use the free tier for this project. Once you've created your PubNub account, you'll need to create a project on the PubNub website. This will generate a set of keys you will need to enter into both the Python and JavaScript code. We will see where this goes a bit later in this tutorial. 
So you're going to want to copy the publish and subscribe keys under where it says My Key Set, which you will of course name as something more appropriate like Stable Diffusion Web App, etc. By the way, the PubNub SDK is already set up in both the Python code and the JavaScript code that I am providing to you in the completed project files on my GitHub repo. You only have to change the publish and subscribe keys in the JavaScript and Python files to your keys that you set up here. Here is my GitHub repo that contains the project files. You can clone the repo or just download the files to your hard drive. This is the download from my GitHub repo. We're going to start in web files. So this folder here named SD is representative of the actual web app itself. And what you would do is copy the entire folder up to a web server. This is a free website I created on the Infinity Free server. And it's just a matter of dragging and dropping the folder that you will download from my GitHub repo into whatever server you set up for yourself. So if you were to have set up your web server on Infinity Free, you would just simply drag and drop this folder over into the Infinity Free file manager. They call it htdocs, so that's, that's sort of the root HTML folder. And you know, that's going to vary from service to service, but in this case, this root is htdocs, and that's where you drop your website. And as you can see inside, there is not a lot going on. It's just four files. So you have the um, image that's created. You have the main HTML file that just happens to have all the JavaScript and style sheet information in one file. I didn't bother breaking it out for simplicity. This is a logo image, and this is a waiting animated GIF for waiting for when the image is being created. So let's just give you a look at what that looks like here. So again, logo, waiting GIF, and uh, this is an image that was created previously, but the key is to leave this name alone, and this is the name that's being referenced in the code, in the JavaScript file, and in the Python file. Assuming you've set something up like this, you would then just simply go into the website and see something uh, that looks like this. Enter your prompts, modify settings, click Dream, and um, that's about it. So now let's take a look at the actual HTML file, this sd.html. So we're going to open that up, take a peek and see what's going on. First of all, everything is already set up. The only thing you need to change in this file is to change these dummy publish and subscribe key codes to the ones that you create when you set your PubNub account up. And we covered that earlier in, in this tutorial. So this is where you put the publish and subscribe keys. The other important thing to remember is to make sure uh, that this channel name, channel-sd, is the same in the Python file, the dream.py. And it should be because I set them up to match. So uh, as long as you don't change this, you should be fine. But just bring your awareness to the fact that these need to be the same in the Python file as well as this HTML file in order for PubNub to work properly. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go into detail about how this was built. Feel free to look through yourself. It's not that complicated. Obviously, you wouldn't want to touch uh, either of these these references up here because it's being run through jQuery Mobile and PubNub. So you need these references in order for the web page to work properly. But that's it for the web page. Okay, now we're going to go into the Python file. So we'll go up a couple levels into Python files. And here we have two files that are important. This is the actual dream.py, and then there's this text file that will capture the prompt that's being received from PubNub. So both of these files must go into your Stable Diffusion main folder that will be created for you when you do the install uh, initially. Uh, as you walk through those videos I mentioned earlier, you will have something that is the Stable Diffusion main folder where this dream.py file exists initially, you will overwrite it with this file, and you will make sure that this text file is in the same folder. So these two should be in the same folder together. Now let's go into the actual code. So here is the code for dream.py that's been modified, and we'll just very quickly walk through this. You'll see I've documented areas uh, where I've made some additions. Uh, so in this case here, we have these References to PubNub that are essential. Again, they're already set up. You don't have to touch. And the only thing you really have to change in this file is this path, which should match the path on your computer. And again, here's this stable diffusion dash main, which is where you will be putting 
dream.py and web prompt text file, you'll be putting it into your version of this based on your path. So this is path of my computer has to be changed on your side once you have it all set up. So you'll change this path. You will also obviously change the host user and password for your FTP host, which will be associated with your web server that you set up. You're going to have to change this to your web server's root for HTML. I showed you before. In my case, it was this htdocs folder, and uh, that's where SD is located. So in your case, you're going to have to change this to whatever or however it's named on your web server. Leave SD alone, change your web server root for HTML. And again, one more time down here, make sure you to leave alone the forward slash SD, and in this case, the forward slash SD, forward slash image.png. So leave these alone because these are referencing the image file that we talked about a little bit earlier. Here is the place where you will change these dummy codes to your actual subscribe and publish key from PubNub. And again, this is going to match your JavaScript file. You don't need to change this, provided you've ensured that this text file is in the same folder as the Python file dream.py. So nothing to do here. Uh, this is important to make sure you don't touch. This should match the JavaScript file. We talked about that earlier, so you don't have to do anything here. And this path needs to be changed to the path that matches the path on your computer that allows uh, this Python script to find this text file. Other than that, the rest of the code does not need to be touched. Again, I'm not walking through this code to show you how I did this. That's not the intent of this tutorial. It was more to get you up and running with this as fast as possible. If you're interested in doing a bit of a deeper dive into what I actually did and how I actually made the changes, uh, I would be uh, certainly willing to do another video if I get enough uh, interest. That's pretty much it as far as what needs to be changed in the Python file. So um, we're going to close out of here and just review. So these files go up to your web server and these files go into the main Stable Diffusion folder that you would have set up. Once that's done, you'll need to run Stable Diffusion the way you were instructed to run it in both of the tutorial videos using the batch file and provided you're using the same dream.py name um, nothing should change in that batch file. In fact, let me just bring that batch file up. Okay, so you can see here is the batch file. This is essentially the same batch file that was provided uh, in the Ting Ting video. The only changes I made uh, were I changed the Anaconda to Miniconda since I'm running Miniconda instead. Uh, that's a minor change. Uh, it depends on whether you set up Anaconda or Miniconda. Um, you don't really need to do that. I would stick with his tutorial, and but everything else is identical. This is the same call made to Python dream.py as in the original, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. That should work fine. So I just wanted to show you what it would look like again. This is assuming after you run the batch file that we just looked at, Stable Diffusion runs, as you can see, it's currently running on the left side of my screen from the Windows command prompt. This is what you should be seeing, basically. It is waiting for a request from the web app. Over here in my web app, I have a prompt of ice cream. I'm gonna hit dream. And it's doing its thing. Cranking through the image. And there you go. And let's do it one more time. And there you go. So uh, enjoy. Looking forward to hearing your feedback in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.